There is one simple trick that I wish I knew sooner when I started playing Hogwarts Legacy, and that's how to get any legendary item you want in the game. And that's exactly what we're going to be going over in today's video. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get legendary items guaranteed and how to fill inventory slots that you need for specific legendary items. It's a really simple process, but it's really interesting how the loot system works in Hogwarts Legacy, and we're going to be going over that today. Now, we're also going to be going over some of these puzzles to get guaranteed legendary items to kit yourself out at the very beginning of the game and there's quite a few guaranteed legendaries that you can get within just the first few hours of playing now there is this puzzle here on this bridge that i found and there's a guaranteed legendary item from completing this puzzle now, if you don't know where this is, it is just outside of the library annex, and I have a feeling that you're going to encounter similar puzzles to this within the world, so it'll be good to go over how this one works. Now, if you have already solved this puzzle, I highly recommend still watching, because we're going to be going over the legendary item trick once we start unlocking the chest. Now, these braziers right here need to be unlocked with the incendio spell, so you do need to be able to unlock that before being able to solve this puzzle. Now, you'll notice that when we light this brazier here, the gear kind of engages on it, and you're going to see that there's a number on this. What we need to do is we need to match up the symbol below the fire, and we need to get the number to match the type of symbol. So if we look down right here, you can see this is the same symbol below the brazier, and then we have a, four, a Roman numeral 4 right there. So that means we need to switch this to Roman numeral 4. And we need to do that for all the rest of these as well. So we got the like two little balls there, and that's number 2. So we're going to change that. And then we're going to look at these other two here as well. So we got uh, two different triangles, one with a circle and one with lines. And we have 1 and 3 for those. So if we head down to the other edge of this, we're going to see some more. And I believe this one is supposed to be on 1. And then this one here needs to be set to three. And once we do that, we're going to be able to unlock the bridge. Now, once you drop down this hole, this is where the important part starts. We can go ahead and reveal the chest in this area. I believe there is uh, two smaller chests and one big chest at the very end. The big chest at the end is the very important one. This is the one that we want to be able to make sure we do right. Now, these large chests that look like this, they're kind of like really ornate, so they take a lot longer to open for the animation as well. These have guaranteed legendary items inside of these. So anytime you see a big chest like this, and you're looking for maybe a specific slot to fill or a specific item, what we can actually do is we can open up our menu, you can go to settings, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new save game. You can create two save games here, so you can always revert to an earlier one if you need to. This doesn't cause any glitches, but I always make tons of save games throughout my playthrough, just in case I make any decisions that I don't want to do. Now, what we're going to do is after we have saved our game, we're going to go ahead and open up the chest and see what we get. Now, this time we got a legendary Emerald Bloom Scarf. Now, the scarf is pretty cool, but maybe I didn't want a scarf, or maybe I didn't want a blue scarf. Maybe I wanted gloves, uh, face wear, headwear, maybe an outfit or robes. What we can do is if we didn't get an item that we want, all we need to do is just go back into our settings and reload that save game and reload that save that we just made. Once back in the game, you're gonna be right in front of the chest that you just opened, except you're gonna be able to open it again. Now this time we got the purple dragon eyed spectacles. These spectacles are pretty crazy looking, but I think you get the general idea of how this works. Essentially, every one of these ornate chests has a set loot pool that they can pull from for legend legendary items, and if you're the type of person that wants to play Fashion Wards Legacy, this could be really handy for kitting yourself out in some really interesting looking gear that very specifically works for the character that you want to create. Now there's another very easy to get guaranteed legendary item that you can get once you can start traveling to Hogsmeade. If you travel north out of Hogsmeade towards Upper Hogsfield, there's actually going to be this little puzzle here that you can do. and. It's actually a maze. You're going to come across these throughout the world, and if you run through them in the proper direction, you're going to see that it actually creates this maze as you walk in. Now, this maze is pretty simple. All we need to do is kind of hug this right wall, and this trick works a lot for many different types of mazes as well, so I always recommend at least trying to do that first, but essentially what we need to do is we need to get to the center of this maze. So we gotta turn right again. And as you get to the end of this maze, you're gonna see another one of these ornate chests. And once you walk up to it, the maze is going to disappear. And this is another location where you can do that save game trick to be able to farm up a specific legendary item from these chests. 
Now I'm sure there are some legendary items out there that are guaranteed drops from chests, but so far all the ones that I have found have been all randomized loot, and you can even farm up regular chests for legendary items too, because those have a kind of a loot pool from like common all the way up to legendary, but on these legendary test chests it definitely makes it easier to farm up some of the best gear in the game while you're playing early. Now the next thing that we're going to go over are these puzzles that you're going to find throughout Hogwarts. This is essentially a basic math problem, and the hardest part is realizing that it starts from 0 and not 1. So if you're looking at this from left to right, this is 0, then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9. Now this squid one is 9, but we don't see squid anywhere on here. Now essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to make 21. Now we have a 13 here in this top left corner, and then we have like this Hydra. Now Hydra on here is going to be worth 0, 1, 2, 3. So if Hydra is worth 3 up there, that means we have a total of 13 plus 3 equals 16. So that means we need 5 more. So that means we need to have 1, 2, 3, 4, whoops, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, which is crab. Now, if you notice, you look at this, you have the two question marks here. That means the little dice thing over here that has two question marks needs to be rolled to the crab looking thing. Now we just got to do that for the top one as well. We need 13 total for this one. We have one uh, plus spider dude, which is spider dude is eight because the last one is nine. So that means we have a total of nine so far and we need four more to be able to get that which means we need to make this one question mark here. Uh, I think that's like an owl on a branch or something. Now this one is right over here. And if we roll that to owl on a branch, we should be able to run back to this door and then we can open it. Now there's interesting items in each of these. There's quite a few of them strewn throughout the uh, throughout Hogwarts, uh, but they're all essentially exactly the same. We got a nice legendary item from that one. It's an unidentified back item. Now you can re-roll these chests just like you did with the other legendary chests, and they have a high rate of dropping good items from them as well. So it's not a guaranteed legendary item, I don't think, from these rooms, uh, but there's a high chance of legendary items. Now, during your travels, if you do get any of that unidentified gear, you won't be able to identify it until you unlock the Room of Requirements, which I'd say is about six hours into the game, probably a little bit less if you are focusing strictly on just doing the main storyline. You just walk up to this chest, you identify the gear, and it'll identify everything that you have found throughout the game. When you find unidentified gear, it means it has a trait slot equipped. Now, we identified this Velvet House Cloak, and it has Destruction 1 in it, which increases our damage with Confringo. Each of these will have different traits, and you'll be able to equip different traits into these later in the game. Now, I do really hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you do locate any specific legendary items that actually drop every single time, I'd really be interested to know where and what types of things these are, so feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Discord, and I'll make sure to give you credit for the things that you do find. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.